It was at this moment that he knew he f***ed up. All right, begin. What's going on, y'all? So it seems that Monique stepped up to the plate and apologized to DL Hughley's family, but she didn't apologize to DL. Now, I do think that an apology was well warranted given the circumstances. We are talking about a young lady and we don't want those emotions to overtake her once again. She's already been through enough and she didn't have anything to do with the beef between Monique and DL. But at the end of the day, I will stand on this. I don't think that Monique was trying to maliciously like make this girl feel some type of way or disrespect her to the magnitude that people took it to i think that monique was just hell bent on exposing dl for the weak man that he is but it backfired because once she brought the daughter into the equation everybody started focusing on the daughter and basically everything that she was trying to say about dl you know it was drowned out but at the end of the day i understood where monique was coming from but she did take it a bit too far now i want to take you guys to you know the actual stand-up that she did in raleigh north carolina where she proceeded to apologize to dl hughley's family and then i'll be right back I do something right now publicly that i did publicly and when i it up i've got to fix it up so i'm going to take care of that right now okay All right, so Monique has spoken. Monique said, I apologize to the family, but I will not apologize to DL. I stand 10 toes down in what I believe in, and I said what I said. But at the end of the day, I wonder, you know, yesterday was Father's Day, and I wonder, is it hard for DL to look his daughter in the eye after he failed her miserably, right? Let's keep it all the way real. A lot of people like to gloss over it, but it's facts. And on top of that, we still don't know the identity of the person that violated his daughter. It's almost like he's still trying to protect this person in a weird, odd way. Just keeping it all the way 100. Why not expose who the person is? I don't care how many years ago that this took place because I'm of the mindset that you expose who this idiot is. It may prevent him from committing the same egregious act. And also it lets people know who come in close contact with him, what he's all about and his history. But at the end of the day, I'm proud of Monique. This is the right step in the right direction, and I wish her well. All right, y'all. Now, 50 Cent took to Instagram yesterday, and it seems that he has a gripe with the way that Father's Day is promoted versus Mother's Day. So, guys, I want to play you a clip of what 50 had to say, and then I'll be right back. Listen, Father's Day is a, is a holiday that's not really a holiday. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's like, I, I show you how this, even by the commercials. Look at the commercials. They'll show you Father's Day, they show you a screwdriver, power tool. Like go fix it. They want to see you to go fix it. You know what I'm saying? But then when you when when Mother's Day comes, like be like Zales. Because you care. It be different like 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 more diamonds. You know what I'm saying? Like they'll do it for the for the mother, but they ain't gonna do it for the father. Mother's Day come, flowers, cards, all kind of shit. You get Father's Day. You get a text on Father's Day. That's how you get a text. Get a text to make sure that you still know where you should send your check. Girl, please. Well, Father's Day may not be a holiday to you because you're such a poor example of a father that it doesn't apply to you. It's not applicable, right? Because the way you treated your son Marquise just because you couldn't stand his mother and the fact that you had to pay child support, you know, it's just cringeworthy that you would even come out on your social media platform and make that statement because you're an unfit father. Anytime you wish for something bad to happen to your own flesh and blood, like what type of person are you? What type of man are you, dog? But get this, he loves and adores his younger son and I'm gonna keep it real. The reason why he loves his younger son is because his younger son is light skin. 
Yeah, I said it and I meant it. The devil is a liar. So you know I ain't worried. What? Talking about men like diamonds too. I knew you wanted to be pampered like a woman. Why don't you go ahead and heist one leg up and turn around and look back at it? Oh, so, so you doing the bending. Now, what's interesting about this dynamic is the fact that the game spoke about 50's bad parenting skills just a few days ago. I want you to check this clip out and then I'll be right back. Yeah. So your agent calls you. You making a You up in Calabasas. Uh -huh. And they're like, yo, game, we got an opportunity for you. Two opportunities, but you got to choose one. You can do this album and whole, a whole collab with this person or star in this movie with this person. Do you choose to do an album, sip your tea, or a movie with 50 Cent? <laughs> And you got to choose one. Look. Man. <laughs> hey, yo. He would have spilled that one. Right? He almost spilled that one. I do. You got to be in a movie. And break it down for us. What kind of movie? <laughs> do this could die in the movie? <laughs> if, we, if we on the opposite sides in the movie, I think the movie is... is he abandoned his son and and I come in, you know, what I'm saying to the baby moms and show her how, you know, a real dad is. And then, you know, at first, at first he don't know. Nah, I'm saying at first he don't, you know, he warming up. He don't just call me dad. But the type of parenting and type of fatherhood that I, you know, right. Adhere to children, you know what I'm saying? That I put on children like it's only a certain amount of time before he's going to be calling me, you know, dad. So it's like me and him. I don't, I, don't, I don't really f with him because he abandoned his kid, his own child, right. his flesh and blood. You right. know what I'm saying? It's flesh right. and blood. And then, and then I come along and pick up the pieces. Now, he don't owe me nothing. You know what I'm saying? But I got problems with him. Any man that don't want to take care of their own child for any reason, I got a problem with. Tea time. We got real deep tea time. Tea time. Yeah. Get real messy. Yeah. All right, so you guys heard that. But what I want to do real quick is pivot and revisit the Monique and D.L. Hughley situation because I want to make this point. It's like you have to have standards from the beginning, right? You can't develop standards once you're at odds with the individual. And the reason why I say that is what if Monique and 50 Cent ended up falling out, right? And having a beef because they are working together right now. Will she bring up how 50 continues to disrespect his son and basically says that he really doesn't care if his son was here or not? Because you can't call out DL for being a weak parent and being a parent that turned their back on their child. If you're looking at 50 Cent and you're working with 50 Cent, he's done the same thing. I know it's a different scenario, but at the end of the day, he's abandoned his child. He doesn't have a relationship with his son. So is it convenient if they just don't say anything to you, Monique? Or once they disrespect you, then you're going to pull out your moral card. You know, I need to know, you know, you still my girl or whatever. You're still the auntie. But, you know, I just that just hit me right then. And I just thought about that. And one more thing I want to bring up in regards to the Monique and 50 Cent situation is the fact that when she was doing her live, I think it was a week or so ago, uh, people in the comments were asking her about 50 Cent and, you know, she may end up falling out with 50 Cent. And Monique said that she won't fall out with 50 Cent because 50 Cent is a man. Really? A man that turned his back on his child? You know what? My bag. She referred to 50 Cent as being a king. Like, for real. Like, everything is just hitting me right now. I just thought about that, y'all. Like, that right there, Monique, was some BS. But ultimately, y'all, I couldn't even shake 50 Cent's hand, let alone work with the dude because of how he treated his son. Just keeping it all the way real. And I'm going to be fair here. I couldn't even work with the game because he violated a woman and he needs to pay her her $7 million judgment, right? That she won against him at the end of the day. But you know, his assessment on 50 Cent and how 50 Cent disrespects his son and the lack of relationship that he has with his son, the game was spot on and I have to give him his props in that regard. But anyway, let's move on to the last topic and I want to talk about Diddy and this situation that's going on with Cassie and her husband, Alex Fine. So Diddy drops a new song and it's called Gotta Move On and it's featuring Bryson Tiller. And basically this song is about the breakup between him and Cassie. He's saying that he's accepting the fact that Cassie has found a new man. 
And of course, Cassie has moved on. She has, you know, gotten married. She has a whole baby over there. So I'm guessing that the real reason why Diddy did this song is because it represents some type of closure for him. But I'm here to tell y'all that Alex wasn't having it. So Alex took to Instagram to wish, you know, his LGBTQ fans, you know, a happy pride. And this is what he had to say. He says, happy pride to all my LGBTQ plus friends. Attached is a charity that helps people who are in the closet and got to move on along with other resources. Ciao. All right. So Alex told Diddy that he needs to come out the closet, basically. Now, I'm pretty sure that Cassie has told Alex a whole bunch of stuff. She's been exposed to so much dealing with Diddy over the years. I would love to be a fly on the wall. But at the end of the day, let me say this. And what I'm about to say, I'm not trying to defend Diddy because Diddy is not a good person morally, but I'm trying to put myself in the situation or in the equation rather and speak from the standpoint of if it was me, right? So say if I was dating Cassie and she ended up leaving me, you know, I didn't cheat on her. I wasn't treating her wrong, but for whatever reason, you know, she just fell in love with Alex. Now, granted, Diddy was paying Alex as a personal trainer to keep Cassie in shape. And so basically you mean to tell me that you're going to come in my home, train my woman, end up stealing my woman from me, get her pregnant, then marry her. I put out a song just saying I need closure and you're going to disrespect me like that. And I put food on your table. Nah, bruh. That's a little bit too far. We're going to have to have some straightening about that. Now, granted, we understand who Diddy is and how he operates. He's not the best human being on earth. And that's what a F. But at the end of the day, I could see if he would have a problem with that. He was paying this man to keep Cassie in shape. He was coming to the home, right? You know, working out with Cassie and things of that nature the whole time, plotting on how to take Cassie away from Diddy. So, you know, at the end of the day, I just find it a little bit disrespectful, especially if Diddy didn't say anything controversial or disrespectful in the song towards Cassie. The song wasn't titled, I want Cassie back. It was basically saying that he had to move on. But anyway, in closing, I would just like to ask this question. When Jennifer Lopez broke up with Diddy, he made a song trying to get Jennifer back. Now he's made this song about Cassie, even though he's not trying to get Cassie back. It's still a song out there. You know, he seems to be incredibly hurt. Now, where's the song for Kim Porter when he left her in the 90s or the early 2000s? Has he ever made a song advocating to get Kim Porter back? You know, if he has, shoot it to me and I will stand corrected. But I haven't heard a song yet where Kim Porter was being elevated to the highest height. You know, I'm talking about while she was alive while they were still dating not when she passed away yes he said some things that were very beautiful and things of that nature after the fact right because of all that guilt let's keep it real but i've never heard him dedicate a song to kim porter and to kim porter only but anyway i'm gonna let this go and let y'all have it in the comments drop down and let me know what you think about this particular situation and all the things that i talked about within this video don't forget to like comment share and subscribe and until next time peace